was on the ZDM, I could play, um, I was singing it live, and I could, uh, I could feel someone calling Vibrating. me. Vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Marty Duda. Welcome to the 13th floor. Today we're excited to have Avalanche City, otherwise known as Dave Baxter, with us, who's just about ready to put out a new record. That's right. How's it going? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good. Cool. And uh, so it's been like four years since your previous record. Yeah. And it must have been quite a four years because that record did pretty well. <laughs> yeah, it was a long, I mean, it's been a, the, the first two years were insanely fast. I've never seen life go, go as fast as it did for those first two years. It was crazy. Uh, and were you, you must not have been expecting it, but how did it affect how you looked at what you were doing? Oh, well, I mean, it, it's, it's changed everything. Uh, like, obviously, um, when I wrote the, the album, I was just like a, a dude hanging out, writing music, and, and I wasn't doing that as a job. Um, and I had no expectations. I just had this idea that I should release it for free and, and, um, and see where that would take me. And, uh, it's been a pretty fun ride. <laughs> yeah, well, you got a silver scroll out of the yeah, deal. Yeah. And all that stuff, does that affect the next record, which is the one that's just coming out? Um, it's, it's an interesting question because uh, everyone says that the second record is the, hard, is the hardest. Although there have um, been quite a few very good second records. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and, um, and I, I didn't really think it would be a challenge, but man, when I started writing for it, it actually was a, a really big challenge because you try and, and put all that stuff out of the way, like writing with, with the idea of, of a record label wanting like another successful album is actually a really tricky thing to do. So it took me a long time to like figure that side out. It's more, it's more of a mind game than anything. Yeah, because obviously there must be a lot of expectations after having such success right off the bat with well, the first one. <laughs> the expectations weren't from the record label or the fans or anything like that. I think the expectations were just like, in your in my own head like yeah, yeah i just wanted to, to to do the best album that i possibly could so it took a long time to do so the album is called we are for the wild places yeah is that significant in any way uh it's um it's actually yeah it's from the the last line on the album so the last line of the last song yeah. um and it's a, it's from a song called wild places there's actually two songs in the album called wild places is one and two Okay, yeah. that'll make things complicated. <laughs> yeah, that's right, confused everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and did you record it in New Zealand? Yeah, I recorded it at, um, I have like a little room in my house that I um, have set up as a studio. Um, so it was fun. It was fun getting to record my own music again right. and, and be my own producer and it, yeah, it was great. Uh, and you mixed it in the States with Chris Walla from yeah. Death Cab for Cutie. Yeah. So you need to explain how that all came about. Oh, uh, well, um, I, I did, um, because I did it all, um, all myself, like all the recording and, and everything, um, it, was, it was pretty cheap, obviously, um, <laughs> if, I don't, if I don't count up all the hours that I spent on it. Right. Um, and so we, I just got to pick my favorite um, mix engineer, because if you have the whole, a whole recording budget just to spend on mixing, you can do some pretty cool things. So um, I've always been such a massive fan of Death Cab for Cutie. Yes, well, and, I believe um, we do have a photo of you wearing a Death Cab for yeah, Cutie yeah. T-shirt when yeah. you played. Death I Warriors didn't tell. Well. I didn't tell Chris Waller when I was there. I didn't tell him that I was a that I was a massive fanboy of him. I kept that quiet. Um, but uh, and was he aware of what you had been doing before? Uh, you contacted him. Oh uh, no, he he um, he only takes on stuff that he that he likes to do. So he listened to like my previous stuff and listened to the album and. Um, and, and approved, which is an amazing seal of approval. Nice. Um, and so, yeah, that was, that was fun getting to, getting to um, hang out with him. And do you, when you meet up with someone who's been doing this for a while longer than you have and yep. who you look up to, is there a process of kind of taking something from them other than just the straight ahead mixing job? Do you talk to them about songwriting and performing and uh, the business? We talked a lot about, um, about the mix process. We talked about everything. I mean, I sat on his couch for two weeks behind him while he, while he mixed and we'd always have conversations. But I feel like the, like the, the stuff that I took away was, was mainly like production aspect of it and just the way that he approached um, a track. So he, he was really slow and really meticulous and, um, and he really like got right into the, into the track. I think he just does it because he likes mm. to, to hang out with musicians and, and do mixing. 
Yeah. yeah. All right, now you're going to perform a couple of songs for us while yeah, we're here. That's right. And the first one is the single that's, yeah. that's out now. That's right. called Inside Out. Mm -hmm. and what can you tell me about that song? Uh, well, this song, um, this was the last song that I wrote for the album. And um, it's, I only, so I'd already gone over to the States and, and mixed the whole album with Chris Waller. I came back and, um, and I wrote a new song. And, um, and it was Inside Out. And I was like, hold the phone guys, right. hold up production. It was about to get mastered. The whole oh, album man. was about to get mastered. And I, and, um, and everyone- I bet you made lots of friends during that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I sent it to my manager and, and the label and they were all so stoked on it. So, so we, we stopped production and, um, on, on the rest of the album and just, I, I recorded this song and, um, and got it mixed and, and mastered. But it basically held up the whole album for probably like four months. <laughs> and how did you know that you, what was it about the song that made you think, hang on, we've got to have this on here? Oh, it's just a, it, for, for me, it's just a song that, that really, that I really got. Like, I, um, it was one of the, it, it's, it's one of those rare songs that, um, I feel like sometimes these songs like just flying through the air and sometimes you can just kind of grab them. And, and that was, that was inside out. Like I, I wrote it all in, in the space of like, half an hour or something like that it was it was really quick and those are those are always the special songs cool all right well let's give it a listen this is avalanche city dave baxter performing inside out One 
want you here, but all we have is gone. Okay, we're back with Avalanche City with Dave. We've heard Inside Out, and we're going to hear another song. But before we, we get into that, I, I, I just wanted to mention that I had seen you perform at the winery. I think you're opening for Gin Wigmore yeah. and the Mutton Birds. Yeah. And I have this distinct memory where as soon as you started playing Love, 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 it was still sunny out, these little kids a stream of them came running down the hill, yeah. the grass, and, and started dancing in front yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was wondering <laughs> how that, that makes you feel as a performer. Uh, well, it's, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't happen for too many songs. And, um, and it's, it's quite like, it's quite an energizing thing to see, like, you know, I mean, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing to see people running to the stage to sing a song. It's just, just to, to feel it, to have anyone singing all the way through a song is like a, is like a crazy um, experience. And, um, and uh, it's, it's something that, that will keep the song fresh, you right. know, like it's, and it's always exciting. And, and I never get sick of playing that song live. It's, a, it's funny because I must have played that song about a thousand times now right. with like all, all the um, promotion stuff on radio. But um, every time I play it live, if there's, if there's some kind of cool reaction like that, it's just, it's so good. And you can't go wrong with 10 year olds. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's your core audience for yeah, life yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I always try and get in on the ground floor so that I can get them while they're young and then they, and then they'll listen to my music for life. Yep. <laughs> you can distribute the new record to all the, you know, kindergartens yeah, and yeah, whatever right. else. You'll be I'll do a set. kindergarten too soon. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you, you've got uh, another song and uh, I'll, you're going to be, I assume, touring at some point. Yeah. Do you have a band that you're working with? Or yeah. You, so solo? I I have like a, a group of guys that I that I take on tour with me, and um, we've just started doing um, our rehearsals for for the live stuff, and it's been so much fun listening to the songs from the album um, uh, being played live with like a full band. Because when I when I approach recording. I try and never think about how it's going to be played live because that can really like right. um, uh, it can really sort of almost hamstring your your the recording process. Um, but with this album, it made it really difficult because there's so many things. There's like knees, like there's just weird instruments all over the place. And then um, when it came to rehearsals, I was like, Ah, oh, how am I going to do this? Uh -huh. <laughs> So we all put our heads together and, um, and we figured it out and it's starting to come together really well. Well, it seems like you must have the best of both worlds because you're a solo artist in a mm -hmm. way. And so when it comes to making your record, you can make it the way you want to. But then you're in a band as well. And when yeah. you hit the road, you've got other people to, to play with. Yeah, yeah. It must be my, um, my strong mindedness. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> well, yeah, get, get things my way. <laughs> Very good. In recording and in life. <laughs> All right, so we're going to hear another song. It's called I Need You. Yeah. Not the most original name for a, a song, I guess. No. Say. <laughs> Sadly, no. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a cool song. And, um, and it's a song that I've uh, played uh, on my last tour, actually. I played it live, just acoustic. And um, it's, it's heaps of fun. So looking forward to playing that. All right, well, let's give it a listen. And we'll catch you out on the road. Yeah. We'll catch the album when it comes out. And thank you for coming down. Cool. Thank you. Thanks right. for having me. Oh my love, I've fallen for you long before You ever said a word to me and now I see I need you more Oh my love, when I had you in my hands to hold Your lips went inside my heart and down my spine and left a hole so I need you more than anybody else Oh, I need you, oh, and I need you now So I need you more than anybody else Oh, I need you, oh, and I 
Oh my love When you looked into my eyes When you threw your arms around me Oh you know you changed my life Oh my love When you whispered in my ear It felt like an age reversed And it washed away all of my years so I need you more than anybody else Oh, I need you Oh, and I need you now So I need you more than anybody else Oh, I need you Oh, and I need you now Oh my love, the first time you noticed me The sunlight was dim compared to the blazing glow of victory So I need you Falling for you long before You ever said a word to me And now I see I need you more